Hi, I'm Eric Boss, and Avengers Endgame closed the book on a number of Marvel heroes and story arcs, but for a few others, it took those books and tore out the last few chapters and then just put them back on the library shelves to watch chaos and confusion spread. I'm referring, of course, to Endgame's time heist, which, as grounded in real-world quantum physics as the filmmakers attempted to make it, still splintered the reality of the MCU into the biggest mess of alternate dimensions since Morty pushed the wrong button. I have explained each of these alternate timelines that now exist in the MCU in a different video but here I'm going to explore the timeline with the most intriguing implications. The forgotten timeline of Avengers Endgame. The one in which Thanos never existed. Erased from existence along with every thick Thanos meme. So in Avengers Endgame, Nebula and Rhodey go back in time to 2014 to acquire the Power Stone for Morag moments before Peter Quill would have taken it in the events of the first Guardians of the Galaxy. That present day Nebula gets crosswired with 2014 Nebula, who at that time was still on the dark side working with Thanos along with Gamora. Evil 2014 Nebula swaps places with present day Nebula returning to the present with the other Avengers and then uses the quantum tunnel to beam up Thanos and the rest from the year 2014 to the present day. That is the Thanos who dies at the end of Endgame along with the rest of his forces. Meanwhile 2014 Gamora fights alongside the Avengers in that battle and then goes MIA. But that means back in 2014 there remains a new branch timeline version of events and which Thanos has disappeared. His quest for the Infinity Stones is no longer a part of this alternate history. Now again, I already touched on this a little bit, but let us dig deeper into this fascinating alternate MCU. So on Earth, events play out mostly the same. The Avengers fight Hydra, and then they fight Ultron, and then they fight each other, civil war, and then they stop talking for a while. But there's no threat from Thanos to bring them all back together. Thor and Hulk's story would mostly remain unchanged. Ragnarok would still have destroyed as Asgard, Loki would still have taken the Tesseract, and they'd all still be on that Asgardian refugee ship headed to Earth. And no Thanos to intercept them and kill half of them. But the Guardians of the Galaxy's history would be completely different. In this alternate history, Peter Quill would wake up dazed on Morag after Rhodey knocked him out, and he'd head into the Morag Temple, to which Cap presumably returned the Power Stone on his return trip through time at the end of Endgame. So either Quill would acquire the Orb slash Power Stone as he did in the events of Guardians Volume 1, or while he was still knocked out, someone would have gotten there first. Like Korath, the Kree extremist working for Ronin, who seemed to be camping out on Morag when Quill first got there to steal the orb. Or Yondu and his Ravagers, who had a deal to steal the orb for the broker on Xandar. Quill had interrupted that deal to steal the orb for himself and take all the profit. Now the broker was presumably working for the Collector of Nowhere, who was an obsessive of the Infinity Stones and ended up getting the Power Stone until his assistant tried to grab it and cause a uh, massive destruction. Now Ronan at this time was working for Thanos, but once he got the Power Stone, he severed ties with Thanos and intended to use that Power Stone for his own selfish goals to destroy Xandar, conquer the galaxy himself. So despite Thanos' now absence from this timeline of events, presumably there still would have been a similar scramble for possession of that Power Stone, just with different players. For example, 2014 Gamora is also absent, meaning Peter Quill in that scene with the broker on Xandar in the first Guardians, he would have left that broker unimpeded. No Gamora there to kick him in the balls. That is, until bounty hunters Rocket and Groot, who were there in that moment, they still would have showed up to grab Peter Quill and try to claim him because he's a wanted man, but no Gamora in the mix. Now, alternatively, Ronin or Korath or another Kree zealot in their group could have filled in for Gamora in this moment. Everyone in this brawl would have still gotten arrested by Xandar security and probably sent to the kiln where the Guardians of the Galaxy first came together, but now, maybe they might not. Gamora was pretty instrumental to their formation. Like if Gamora was replaced by someone else from Ronin's team, Drax still might have joined since his motives for joining were so tied to vengeance against Ronin. But throughout the film, so much about the team dynamics within the Guardians of the Galaxy relied on a delicate balance of personalities and temperaments, in which Gamora was such a key component to that mix that it's hard to know if the Guardians could have ever come together the same way in that sweet red rover to save Xandar from Ronin. But there is one thing that we do know about this forgotten timeline. Big bad Thanos may be gone, but another big bad was brewing across the galaxy, Ego, the living planet. So recently, Reddit user LJ Gore pointed this out in a trending post. Ego from Guardians Volume 2 is a celestial who, for thousands of years, had been planting his seed on planets all over the galaxy, planning in this 
plant on planet plan to absorb all life forms into himself, creating a unity hive mind and destroying everything as we know it. So without the united Guardians of the Galaxy to stop Ego from doing this, would this forgotten timeline have ended in Annihilation anyway? Well, maybe. To go through with his plant on planet plan, Ego needed Peter Quill, his half-celestial offspring, to join him on his planet. That link was crucial for the unity to initiate. Throughout Peter Quill's life, Yondu kept him hidden from Ego, but when Quill used a Power Stone to save Xandar, the Guardians became famous, and Ego was able to track down Quill. But in this alternate history, maybe Quill never had that Power Stone moment, and he remains hidden from Ego. Now, Ego's pretty resourceful. He probably would have been able to find Quill eventually. Also, Quill's a remarkable guy. He probably would have made headlines for something else. But even in that scenario, it's totally possible that Quill wouldn't be alone. It's possible he would have found a different family unit to fight for, and still summoned the strength to stop Ego. That different family unit? The Avengers! Like, let's say that Ego still finds Quill and begins his plan, 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 plan. Ego's goo spreads on planets everywhere, like outward from various points like the one in Missouri. Earth is threatened, so imagine the Avengers finding a way to get off-world, like through the Quinjet. And assuming it would take Ego at least a few years longer to find Quill in this timeline, this could even coincide with Thor and Hulk post-Ragnarok. So they're off-world as well, and with Loki and Valkyrie join this coalition, also, you have to imagine that Captain Marvel, who was presumably saving planet after planet around the galaxy in this time, she would respond to this calamity too. So basically, even if in this alternate history, Ego replaces Thanos as the biggest threat to the universe, it would be in a scenario in which Peter Quill was there to stop him, presumably joined by a formidable lineup of heroes, more or less these same exact ones that Thanos faced in the final act of Endgame. Now, of course, the Marvel Universe is a complex place with infinite independent actors and infinite possibilities outcomes. There are various heroes and villains we don't even know about floating around out there who could cause or prevent any side event imaginable. Which is what makes this speculation for the future of Marvel so fun, because this fracturing of reality has opened up so many what-if scenarios. But here's my question for you. Do you think Gamora was necessary for the formation of the Guardians? Also, question two. In a world without Thanos, which Marvel villain would ascend to the alpha status? Comment down below with your theories, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EAVoss, and subscribe to New Rockstar for theories and explanations of everything you love. Thank you for joining me, and yeah, let's be thankful that we live in this timeline because I think I would lose it if I kept hearing people say, ego did nothing wrong.